Well, you all ready for the word? All right. If you want to stand, stand. If you want to sit, sit. If you want to kneel, kneel. Let's pray together. Father, we're so grateful tonight as we come into your house, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity we have to open your word, God, and to hear from you. We know it's not a man or a woman that we're hearing from tonight. We're hearing from the Holy Spirit. Welcome. Be our teacher. Be our guide. Give us your vision, instruction, wisdom, direction, correction. Lord, open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and our hearts to have a good understanding. And may we be good ground where the word is sown, and may we produce fruit that remains unto your kingdom forever and ever. Lord, we thank you, God, that you are good and that you're doing a good work in us and doing a good work in this place tonight. Lord, we ask, God, that you don't just bless us, but bless all of our brothers and sisters here in the Inland Empire as well as around the planet that are both preaching and hearing the gospel. Lord, we lift them up to you and pray that you watch over them, encourage them, bless them, Lord God. And Father God, we also want to lift up to you our persecuted brothers and sisters scattered abroad throughout the nations, Lord. We ask that they would endure to the end, God, because of your grace and your goodness in their lives, Lord. It's in Jesus' mighty name we're all in agreement. We say amen. amen. Tonight, have a seat. Get your Bibles out and go with me to Deuteronomy chapter number 6. Deuteronomy 6, we're going to be in verse number 17. I'm going to do a part number two of the message that I started last Wednesday night called The Path and the Protection of God. If you remember, this message, I, I, I had two titles really because I couldn't really decide which one was better. And, and so for those of you that, you know, if you're, if you're thinking about, you know, your life and that sort of thing, the title of tonight's message is The Path and the Protection of God. But maybe you're a little bit younger in this place. Maybe you're a little bit more hip, right? A little bit more trendy, that sort of a thing. For you guys, the title of tonight's message is Boulevards, Bridges, and Boundaries. All right, this is a part number two. Now, don't worry if you missed part number one. I will catch you up to speed tonight so that you're right where we're at, and we will review, and then you can have tonight's message, which will stand on its own. I always encourage people, though, if you didn't get a hold of part number one, go online and listen. It will bless you. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number 17 says this. It says, you shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God, his testimonies and his statutes, which he has commanded you. Remember last time we talked, we said that we live in an information age. Everybody's trying to get information to better their life. But the greatest information we could ever have is from God's Word. And more than just information, God has a way for us to think and to live in order to have the best life we possibly can have. God wants you to be blessed. God wants you to succeed. In fact, success is a Bible word. You will find success in your Bible. God wants you to have good success. God wants you to live a life that's fulfilling. God wants you to win in every area. And here in the book of Deuteronomy, we see that there are commands, testimonies, and statutes. And if you remember, we said that these are like the boulevards, the bridges, and the boundaries of God. They're both the path and the protection of God for our lives. The last time we were together in way of review, we learned about the commands of God. That the commands are like the boulevards. They are big and they are beautiful, just like a boulevard, right? A boulevard is a wide street. It's an open avenue for us to go down. But also, most boulevards are lined with beautiful trees. And in the same way, the commandments of God are just like that. They're wide open. They're there for us to travel on. They're easy to go down, right? Remember we said that the commands of the Lord are, are not burdensome to us, but they are actually a blessing for our lives. And those commands we can travel on. They're the way that God has for us, but also, they're beautiful. And the commandment that God gives us in the New Testament is simply this love, right? We have a command to love, to love God first with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love others just as Christ has loved us and just as we love ourselves, all right? So for those of you that missed last week, you're all caught up right then and right there. Tonight, I want to talk to you about the testimonies of God, the testimonies of God, or if you will, the bridges that God has for our lives. First of all, let's define what a testimony is. A testimony simply is a witness of God's faithfulness. Okay, if you're writing notes, you can write that down. A testimony is a witness of God's faithfulness. Think about being in a courtroom for a second. And if you heard the judge say, I would like to hear the testimony of somebody, right? And they called them to the stand and they said, give us your testimony. What would they be? They would be giving their eyewitness account of what took place. In the same way, when God says, I have testimonies that I want you to keep, what is he saying? He's saying, I have a witness of my faithfulness that I want you to remember. Some things that I want you to hold on to. I want you to keep my testimonies. These testimonies remind us of God's covenant agreement and how we are to live because of that covenant agreement. 
Now, maybe you don't know what a covenant is, but once again, it is a legal term. It's a binding agreement, the closest, most solemn and sacred of all contracts that there ever could be. Deeper than a contract, it's, it's, it's a binding. So when God says, I'm in covenant, that I have agreed by myself to do these things, He is bound by it. And because of that, God acts a certain way, and when the telling of that story comes about, that is the witness or the testimony of the acts of God. Okay? You guys still following me? Bill Johnson writes in The Essential Guide to Healing, testimonies show us what to expect. A testimony reveals God's acts, which in turn reveal His ways. Each story contains a wonderful revelation of God's nature and His heart for people. When you start to hear what God does, when you start to hear how God acts, when you start to recount the wonderful stories in the Old and the New Testament, it shows God's heart for His people. Can I say to you like this? A testimony is a bridge between where you are and where God wants to take you. A testimony is a bridge between where you are and where God wants to take you. I wanted to have that up on the overheads. There it is. There we go. They got it. They got it. They're good. A testimony is a bridge between where you are and where God wants to take you. In other words, if you can see that there's a, a pathway that you're on, if you're on the boulevard, right, and you're going down the boulevard, you, you've got the commands of God, and you come to a spot where you notice there's a large river rushing, impassable, you can't get across that thing. What do you need? You need a bridge that goes over the waters in order to cross over to the other side, right? Because that's your destination. That's where you need to go. But you need something to help you to lift you up and to carry you across. Think about if you were walking on foot and you came up to the edge of a canyon and maybe there wasn't water at the bottom, but it was just jagged rocks and it went straight down for hundreds of feet. You'd say, there's no way I can get across this. I don't have any ground to stand on here unless there was a bridge that bridged the gap between where you are and where you want to be. A testimony is a bridge between where you are and where God wants to take you. It's a footing where there's a lack of ground. Without the testimony, you wouldn't be able to cross. Think about that for a second. Without a bridge, you can't cross over that river. Without the bridge, you couldn't cross that chasm with all those jagged rocks underneath it. And without the testimony of God, we cannot cross over from where we are to where God wants to take us. Is anybody listening tonight? Okay, I'm taking you somewhere. We're going to bridge this with a testimony from God's Word. Think of it in regards to your salvation for a second. There was a chasm that you couldn't cross. There was space between you and God. God is holy, right? If God is up here in the heavens and we're down here on the earth, the Bible says who can ascend to God? No one can, right? We cannot lift ourselves up. We cannot cross that chasm. There was a space between us, and we had no ground to stand on in regards to our salvation. In other words, even if we could fly, even if we could elevate ourselves to get up into the presence of God, we could not stay in the presence of God because legally we had no ground to stand on. The witness was against us, right? There is an adversary who would accuse you and would say, I've seen every foul, dirty thing you've ever done in your life. You're a sinner. And we'd have to say, well, that's true. I messed up. I was wrong. I lied. I hurt people. I did things that I'm ashamed of. I broke laws, crossed lines, and I don't have any ground to stand on. But once you heard about the testimony, come on. Once you heard about the testimony of Jesus Christ, the, the witness account from the Word of God that said that God robed Himself in flesh, that deity put on humanity, that He came down to this earth and He walked among us, that, that God now, robed in the flesh, lived His life among us and showed us the heart of the Father. And you heard the testimony that He lived the perfect, spotless, sinless life, and that He went and He lived that life in front of the people, but they didn't understand who He was or what He was doing. And the leaders of that 
that day took him and they accused him and they had an illegal trial by night and they condemned him to death and handed him over to the Romans who took him and crucified him on a Roman cross. And as he was lifted up from the earth, he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because at that moment, the father turned from him and poured out his wrath for sin upon Jesus on the cross for humanity past, present, and future. You heard the testimony that he died there on the cross and he took your punishment and your pain. But the testimony didn't stop there, did it? He was buried in the grave, and three days later, he came out on a morning just as the sun was rising. They came running to the grave, but they couldn't find him there. They ran in, and they looked, and they didn't see him. They knelt down, and they crouched down, and there was no body. Why? Because Jesus raised from the dead, and death no longer has hold on him. He is alive forevermore. You heard the testimony that he's ascended to the right hand of the Father and now makes intercession on your behalf. You heard the testimony. And you believed it. And now all of a sudden, you had ground to stand up. There was a bridge, not the cross, but Christ on the cross. He himself is the ladder that he said to Philip, Phil, you will see the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. He is the one that bridges the gulf between God and man and man and God. He is the mediator. He is the go-between. He is the bridge between the two parties, us and God. And now he brings us together in one, in himself. He is the one. He is the bridge. You heard the testimony of Jesus Christ. Can I show it to you in the word of God? In 1 John 5, 9 through 11, in the message paraphrase, it says this. If we take human testimony at face value, how much more should we be reassured when God gives testimony as he does here? Testifying concerning his son. I love the fact that he says if we take human testimony at face value. A lot of times I find that people believe things simply because someone told them. It was on Twitter. They said it. I, I, I saw it on the news. It has to be true. No, 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 you don't understand. My friend told me. I trust my friend. My mama taught me this as I was growing up. We take the testimony of man at face value a lot of times. A lot of the things that we do, a lot of the ways that we live, is because we heard from someone about something, and so we live our lives under the assumption that that's true. So if we take human testimony at face value, how much more? Can I repeat that for a second just to drive home a point? How much more? Oh, one more time. I think it's worth saying. How much more should we be reassured when God gives testimony, as he does here, testifying concerning his son? Look at this. Whoever believes in the son of God inwardly confirms God's testimony. Whoever refuses to believe, in effect, calls God a liar, refusing to believe God's own testimony regarding his son. And the Bible says this is the testimony. It goes on in the next verse, verse number 11. This is the testimony. In essence, God gave us eternal life. The life is in his son. Notice where you were at, you could not make it across to God without a bridge. And the testimony of Jesus Christ was that bridge that took you from where you were at to where God wanted you to be. Saved, whole, healed, God's family, a saint of Almighty God, headed for heaven, denying your presence in hell. Jesus himself is the bridge, and it's that testimony that brought you to that place. God's testimonies are powerful. So when the Bible tells us to keep his testimonies, in essence, it's saying that we need to take the bridge. Did y'all catch that? God's testimonies are so powerful, so when the Bible says to keep his testimonies, what it's really saying is, take the bridge. In other words, you can cross over. You don't have to stay where you're at, hindered by obstacles that come in the way of your life. Some of you guys have stopped with God. Maybe you said, I plateaued. I don't know why I'm not going forward. I don't know what it needs to happen in order for me to get to where I need to be. Can I tell you something? It's wrapped up in the testimony of God. Tonight, you're going to get a hold of something that will literally take you to places that you have been desiring to get to for a period of time in your life. You've been praying, you've been asking, you've been crying, you've been wondering, and yet God is saying, it's right here in my word. My testimonies are going to be the bridge that takes you to where you need to be. Is this for anybody tonight, or, or is this just for me? All right, praise God. 
So the question comes, if I know that it can take me where I need to be, where are those places that it can take me? Where, where are they? And, and how does that work in my life? Because we need to understand, take the bridge. Take the bridge. Keep his testimonies, and God will bring you to those places. So where will it take us? First thing is this. Testimonies will take you to new understanding. Testimonies will take you to new understanding. That's one of the places that the bridge goes, is a place of new understanding. I heard the story of a little boy at the beach and came down with his towel, had his shorts on, was ready to go swim in the water, and he saw a lady lying on a towel as he was walking by. He stopped and he looked at her. He said, excuse me, ma'am? She says, yes, honey, what can I do for you? And he says, well, um, I, I need to know, do you believe in God? And she says, yes, yes, I believe in God. He says, well, are you a Christian? And she says, yes, yes, I'm a Christian. And he says, okay, so you go to church? Y yeah, I, I'm a Christian and I go to church every week. She starts to wonder what he's getting at. She says, yes, son, every week. Every week I go to church. I'm a Christian. He says, okay, will you hold my quarter for me while I go swimming? <laughs> See, the little boy didn't know something about this lady. He didn't know if she was trustworthy or not. It was on her testimony that he was able to trust her with something that was valuable to him. Can I tell you something? There are things that you don't understand about God. Things that you don't know whether or not you could fully trust him yet. Some of you guys have been in church for a long time. Some of you guys have been in church for a short time. But no matter what, we're all on a journey of faith with God. We're all growing in our relationship with God. We're all growing, in the Bible says, in the wisdom and knowledge and understanding of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And no matter how much you know or think you know or don't know or know that you don't know. Anybody don't know what I'm talking about right now? I think I might have lost myself. But no matter how much you know or don't know, here's the thing. It's the testimony of God that's going to get you to where you need to go. It's the testimony of God that's going to bring you to new understanding. I love what it says in Psalms. Turn there with me in the Psalms. We're going to be playing in the Psalms for the rest of the evening tonight. Psalms number 19, all right? Right in the middle of your Bible, you'll find the Psalms. Psalm number 19. And find in Psalm number 19, verse number 7. Look at what it says in Psalm number 19, verse number 7. It says, the law of the Lord is perfect. It's flawless. My goodness. But look at what it goes on to say. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure or true, making wise the simple. See, when we were simple, when we were without understanding, when we didn't know things about God, it was the testimony of God that brought us the wisdom that we need. In other words, if you don't know whether or not God is going to do something in your life, if you don't know his character, if you don't really understand whether or not God's really good because I see so much bad happening on the earth, it's a testimony of God. It's when God delivered the children of Israel who were oppressed and who were in slavery. It's when God showed up and delivered the people that were undeserving, and yet when they cried out to him, he had mercy and compassion on them and delivered them. It's, it's the testimony of God coming on the earth in the form of his son and taking people who were sick and who were hurting, people who were bound by the devil, and delivering them and healing them and setting them free. It's those testimonies that are going to show you that God is good, that God is love, that God is kind, that God is gracious, that God is compassionate. It's the testimony that's going to bring you to that new understanding. See, if you don't understand what God is doing, you need to take a look at what God has done. Let me say that again. If you don't understand, God, what are you doing? Then simply take a look at what God has done. It's these testimonies that are going to show you. It's these testimonies that are going to reveal to you. It's in the Word of God that you're going to start to understand. It's in these testimonies, these stories, the, these things that show God's faithfulness. It is the testimony that will bring you to that new understanding. If he was faithful before, then guess what? He'll be faithful again. Why? Because God does not change. If he was powerful before, guess what? In your future, he will be powerful still. It's the testimony that's going to show you that. That's going to bring you to the new understanding. that You need to get where God wants to take you. Second thing is this, is testimonies not only give us new understanding, but testimonies take us to new levels. Anybody ever prayed, God, I want to go to a new level with you? Right? 
Okay, three of us have. All right, praise the Lord. The rest of you guys, where is your drive, man? We all want to grow in the things of God, don't we? Don't we? There you go. I got more hands on that one. We all want to grow, right? We all want to go up to new heights, new levels, if you will. And it's the testimony of God that's going to take you to the next level that you need to go to. Keep his testimony. Take the bridge. The bridge goes up to a new level. It will take you higher than you ever thought, farther than you ever dreamt. The testimonies of God will lift you. They will raise you up like an elevator and bridge the gap between the ground and the floor that you need to be on. Heard the story. I don't know if it's true or not. Probably not. Got to say that disclaimer in this day and age. Pastor Dan's telling fibs right in church. But I heard the story of a guy who was studying anthropology in South America and went down there and studied indigenous peoples, brought with them an interpreter that knew their language and uh, started to study their culture and how they had changed over the years and some missionaries had come. The whole tribe had gotten saved. And so here this guy was studying the, this tribal people and, and uh, was trying to figure out their history and that sort of a thing and how the missionaries came and affected their lives and that sort of a thing. And he was really disgusted that, that these people all were Christians because he was an atheist. And so he, through his interpreter, was talking to the chief, and he said, you know, it really is a shame. You have a beautiful culture and beautiful history, and you're a beautiful people, and, and, and you know, it really is a shame that religion ruined your culture. So the tribal leader, through the interpreter, responded back and said, see that rock over there? And he says, yeah. He says, that's where we used to crush the skulls of our enemies. He says, you see that tree right there? He says, yeah. He says, that's where we used to sacrifice children to our gods. He says, without our religion, without Jesus Christ as our Lord, you would be our dinner tonight. How many of you know they're at a new level when they're not cannibals any longer? Right? See, it's the testimony. It's the testimony of God. The testimony that will bring you to new levels when you start to understand what God has done. Well, when all of a sudden you have an eyewitness account of God showing up and being faithful in the midst of a trial, well, when God changes your life and takes you to a new place where you were dead in your sin and where he crossed you over on the bridge of Jesus Christ to now being alive in him, you got a testimony that now is taking you to a new level. No longer where you used to be. God wants you to go up higher. You're still in the Psalms? Psalm 78 this time. Psalm number 78. In Psalm 78, I'm going to read a bunch of scriptures, verse number 2 through verse number 8, all right? Psalm 78, starting in verse number 2, and like I said, we're going to read through verse number 8. It says this in Psalm 78, 2. He says, I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. Everybody say of old. You know, when you hear something of old, that means that this is a story that's been around for a long time. This is something that's been around for a while, right? How many of you know that this Bible has been around for centuries? How many of you guys know that people have tried to eradicate this? People have said that God is dead. People have fought battles, wars over this book. How many of you know that there are blood of martyrs to protect this book? These are the sayings of old. And when the Bible says they are dark, it means that they're hard to discern, hard to understand. He says, I'm going to drop some wisdom on you from a long time ago. I'm going to tell you about something. Look at what it says, verse 3, which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us. See, at this time, they did not have books like we have. They may have had one scroll in the synagogue. They would have had very limited number of copies of the Bible at this time. Not everybody had a Bible in their lap or in their pocket like you and I do in 76 translations just on a touch of a button. They didn't have that. So what did they have? They had the verbal traditions. They had their parents telling the children the statutes, the commands, and the testimonies of the Lord. Is anybody listening? Which our fathers have told us. Verse number three. We will not hide them from their children, telling to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. Notice the testimony that's going forth to the children. Verse 5, for he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, 
which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. Verse 6, that the generation to come might know them. The children who would be born, that they may arise and declare them to their children. See, this is just generation to generation passing on the testimony of what God did. God established that testimony in Jacob. Why Jacob? Have you ever thought that for a second? Because Jacob had his name changed to Israel, right? But it says a law for Israel, but a testimony for Jacob. Why Jacob? Because Jacob was a rascal before he became Israel. But Jacob had an encounter with God wrestled with him all night and walked away with a limp because God was merciful and kind to him. Jacob's life changed, and now he had a testimony that he had wrestled with God and had prevailed. That was the testimony that was appointed for Jacob. But the law was given to Israel. That was the princely nation that came, that received the commandments of God. That's why it says that. It goes on in the next verse. Look what it says. Verse number Seven, that they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep, everybody say keep, everybody say keep again, keep his commandments. Verse eight, and may not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that did not set its heart aright and whose spirit was not faithful to God. How many of you know that that generation that it's talking about right there was going down levels? right? When you don't keep the testimonies of God, when you don't remember, when you don't pass it on to your children and your children's children and keep it through the generations, now all of a sudden the Bible says that you are stubborn and rebellious, that you are in opposition to God. And when you oppose God, the Bible says that God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourself in the sight of God and he will lift you up. You'll go to a new level when you keep his testimonies. But when you rebel against God and his testimonies, you'll go down. If you continue to read on, it talks about the people who didn't keep the testimonies. Ephraim in the day of battle walked away even though they were armed and ready. It talks about the children of Israel and how they wandered in the wilderness because they didn't keep the testimonies of God. They didn't remember that God delivered them from slavery in Egypt. And some of us in our lives, we forget that God delivered us from sin. We forget how much God did in our lives. We forget the fact that we were ready to die and be buried in a grave, and yet God snatched us out of the pit. God raised us up and set our feet upon a rock, that God took care of our lives, that God provided for us, that God healed us, that God delivered us. And when we forget, we go down. But when we say, oh, no, I'm not going to forget. Hey, kids, come around and listen to what God did for your daddy. Hey, kids, I need to tell you what God did for your mama. Hey, kids, not just us. Let me tell you about your grandma and your grandpa and the generations that came before us. Let me share with you the story of Moses and David and Ruth and Esther. Let me tell you something about my Jesus. When we keep his testimonies, God takes us to new levels. Come on, somebody give the Lord a praise. Last one for us tonight is this. Testimonies will take you to new victories. I should have had a bigger amen than that. Thank you for my people on my right-hand side over here. I got my amen section over there. What about the rest of y'all? Did anybody need a victory in life? Anybody need a breakthrough? Anybody need God to show up on your behalf and win a battle? My goodness, I need that every day of my life. I need God to move in my life. And it's the testimonies that are going to take me to new victories. Wait, Pastor, I thought testimonies were of the past. I I thought testimonies what God did, not what God's going to do. No, testimonies are the bridge that take you to the future. Are you listening? Let me show this to you in Psalm 119. Turn there with me. In fact, if you read through Psalm 119, longest psalm, longest chapter, if you will, in the Bible. Psalm 119. Find Psalm 119, verse number 95. Psalm 119, verse number 95. As you read through Psalm 119, you will find the word testimony several times, how the testimonies are my counselors. They sit down and talk to me about my life and help me to understand and to navigate forward into the future. You'll find it all throughout there, the testimonies. I considered my ways when I remembered the testimonies of God. I was looking for where the bridge was. Oh, there's the testimony. That's where I need to go. All throughout Psalm 119. Look at what it says in Psalm 119, verse number 95. The wicked wait for me to destroy me. 
Some of you guys feel like that when you wake up in the morning, don't you? Come on, let's be honest. Let's be real in this place. Pastor, I'm a Christian. I, I've, I've got the victory. I'm, I'm more than a conqueror, Pastor. I've, I, I got the thanks be to God who leads me in his triumph every day because of Jesus Christ, right? Oh, cut the baloney. Come on. Some of you guys woke up this morning. You said the devil is outside waiting. And his name is Bill Collector. His name is Boss. Some of you, his name is Bubba. I don't even know who that is. But, man, you don't want Bubba, right? The wicked wait for me to destroy me. But I will consider what? Consider what? One more time. Consider what? Your testimony. God, I'm not going to worry about what's ahead in the future because I know what you've done in the past. There is victory awaiting me because God goes before me. He's already taken care of me up to this point, and he hasn't brought me this far to leave me. Because there's a testimony of God's victory, I will not be afraid of the battle that's ahead. Because of the testimony of healing, I will not give up on my health. Because of a testimony of financial provision, I will not neglect my tithe and my offering. Because of a testimony of God's deliverance, I will not go back to sin. <laughs> Revelation. Come on. You can quote this verse with me. Chapter 12, verse number 11. They overcame him. Whoa, 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 whoa. Him. Is that a capital H or a lowercase h? If you read the context of this verse, that's talking about the devil. They. Who's they? You and me. They overcame him. We overcame the devil. How they do it? By the blood of the lamb. There's, there's what God did, right? And what? And the word of their testimony. Not loving their lives even unto death. Even if I die in this process, even if it looks like in the natural I lose the battle, guess what? You can't get me off this. I'm going on with God because I have the testimony of Jesus Christ. It's the bridge. Keep his testimonies. Take the bridge. It will take you from where you're at to where God wants you to be. Where will it take us? It'll take you to new understanding. Where will it take us? It'll take you to new levels. Where will it take you? It'll take you to new victories. Can somebody give the Lord a praise tonight for his testimonies? Oh, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus.